Today, we're gonna test the limits of Shunk's Vero S quick change palette system. I don't think it's gonna work. Super sketchy. Super sketchy. It's pretty sketchy. First sketchy setup we have here. This is sketchy to get sketchier. Check out how sketchy this is. Yes! All right, so we got our material loaded up. Just one problem, we gotta get 1,200 pounds of chips off of this beast. Let's get her done. Hey Barry, don't be dropping that material in that machine. If that thing drops, you're not getting it out. And once this pallet like lifts up, nothing's holding that thing. That thing can chip. So just manually rotate that and be careful. This whole thing is sketching. Everything about it. Yes! Let's murder some metal. Today we're working with a pretty big piece of 4140. Now, normally when I'm approaching a part this big, I'm gonna do it with an indexable cutter, either a high feed mill, a face mill, an indexable end mill, something like that. But the problem is, with those you can't take a very deep depth of cut, so you end up with a much longer cycle time. So today we're gonna attack this piece of material using a big one inch end mill with a three inch length of cut. The only problem with that is, with as aggressive as we're gonna be cutting, there's no end mill out there that's gonna be able to survive a full 30 hours of cutting. Now, when you already know that you're gonna be breaking a couple of tools during the process, you need to make sure that you leave enough stock so that if the tool does break, you don't end up gouging the finished surfaces of your part. Now, we're gonna be starting off super aggressive. Like I said, we're gonna be at 1,200 surface feet, which is almost double Kenna Metal's maximum recommended surface footage. To add to that, we're going to be cutting dry with just through spindle air. So with that super high surface footage with just air and no coolant, we are very likely to break something today. programming our first stage of roughing, we did something very simple. We started out with a peel tool path and we just peeled out a big three inch deep chunk of material. Then we created a stock model from that. And using that stock model, we then created dynamic OptiRough tool paths. By using the stock model, that enables OptiRough to see only the material that's remaining so that we don't waste time with a bunch of air cuts. For our OptiRough parameters, we're using a step over of 10% of our tool, so 0.1, and we're stepping down three inches with a 0.2 step up. So because we're only roughing, all I'm doing is creating an OptiRough tool path, immediately after it, a stock model, immediately after that, another OptiRough, and we just keep on going through that for each rotation of our part.
Now another thing that I talked about in another video was using a thread mill tool path with an end mill to create a funnel shape so that when you're dynamic milling, you don't end up with a tall tower that'll end up breaking your end mill. So you can see here, the first thing I did was create this dynamic OptiRough tool path. And I can see here in the middle is where there's gonna be that tower that's gonna potentially break my cutter. So after creating this dynamic OptiRough tool path, I went back in time and created this thread mill tool path that has a 30 degree taper angle and starts at the top of the hole and ramps its way down. By doing that, if we take a look at our simulation, so you can see we created our funnel shape, then as our tool roughs all the rest of the material away, we're going to end up not having that tower shape that could have broken our cutter. We are very likely to break something today. Break something today. Break something today. Break something today. There it goes. I saw that one coming. <laughs> the sound changed and voila. Now something else to think about is a lot of people are afraid to break tools. The thing is, if you have to break $3,000 end mills, but you're going to save 50 hours, you need to consider your shop rate. If your shop rate's between $100 and $150 an hour, and this end mill breaking saves you 50 hours, that means you just saved $6,000 or more, minus the cost of the end mills, so we still come out on top if we break a tool. Now, a lot of times when people see sparks, they think it's a bad thing, but it's really not, because the heat is leaving with your chip, and that's what you want. But in this case, because the set screws in our holder came loose, our end mill got some little chips in it, and you can see that problem is compounding because now the spark is spinning around with the cutter. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Stay tuned because in our next one, we're gonna finish off all of our roughing after we make a few little tweaks to our end mill to try to get some better tool life.